putting flats on the Michael Kelly, but I may have screwed the pooch right from the get go. Hey, if you've been following the, uh, the Martin fretless acoustic bass uh, project, uh, then you'll already know this. Um, make sure you measure correctly um, before you snip your strings because it might turn out kind of ugly. Um, uh, I put a set of extra long scale um, uh, jazz bass uh, strings on uh, on that guitar right there. Uh, and when I was putting the A string on, I mismeasured. And it came up short. Too short for me to put on that one. Because that's not mine. Um, this one is. So we're going to take these ghastly strings off of it and replace them. But we're going to see if this one is going to be long enough or not. It's going to be really marginal, but we're going to take a stab at it. I ended up just taking this little piece of wood and just pushing it up from the underside, in case you were curious. Maybe, maybe. All right, I actually think that's gonna work. Wow. High tech stuff, chapstick. Just a tiny bit, not too much. Um, wow, did I luck out there. It has a, uh, it has a smaller peg and, um, that has a, that has a monster bridge on the back of it. Um, not nearly as thick as this one and the bridge is much taller, uh, than this one and that's kind of how we're getting away, um, with that um, so now let's um, let's start with a whole string and, uh, and we'll talk about how to hopefully properly get that set up all right I'm going to show you something that I do mm. realizing that we're all big boys and girls here and uh, you can do what you want to do. Okay, this is the original bridge pin off of this guitar that has been chewed up in Waller, partly by me, partly not by me. These are the ones that I'm going to replace them with, but I want you to, I want you to see something. Notice how I've got a bevel cut in the edge of that. 
Now, why are you doing something like that, James? Well, let me tell you. When this goes down into the body of the guitar, and you're wanting it to pull up, you want it to catch against the underside of the soundboard. The bridge plate is what it's called. You want this to catch. You don't want it to catch on the end of this because conceivably at some point this could slip out. Can I put a number on it? No. I can't put a number on it. Um, would I rather be covered so that I don't have to mess with that possibility if I'm gigging and for some strange reason my my guitar is suddenly flat in the middle of my most most favorite to this song doesn't cost anything to do it. I just file them, I, just, I sandpaper them down, and then I just take a file and I just clean up the edge. And I make sure that this channel here where your strings are going to go through is nice and clean as well. Um, it doesn't cost you anything to do it if you're replacing it. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, the downside of this is these have got some sort of mother of pearl inlay and these have just got black dots or a little different color. It's fine. The world will keep right on spinning, folks. Um, <coughs> so, let's... I'm going to put this in here. Notice how I've got this double. Or maybe you can't notice because I'm way too far down at the end of the table. And now I'm going to push that down in there. And at the same time, I'm pushing up with my finger to make sure that that string is setting where it's supposed to set. So just because we can, we'll take a look see here real quick. Real quick being a relative term. Is my guitar too fat to fit in there? There we go. See that string nice and tight up against that bridge plate. That's the way she's supposed to be, folks. All right, um, so this string we know was already miscut because I was doing the big boo-boo. So how do I figure out my length on this one? All right, let's take this, string goes down, bridge pin goes in. This is a fat string, so we tend not to there's not a lot of not a lot of wiggle room in there. There we go. Looky there. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Well, what can we do? Is it even too thick to fit through here? It certainly is. Hmm. We might just be going with this much. Because what I would do is I would tell you to uh, take your, use this as your starting point, and I would tell you to come up to here. Well, coming up to here gives us that much. So, all right, that's what we're going to go with.
You know they make these nifty peg winders. I've got one. In fact, I've got a couple of them. This just seems so much more fun. That may have been sarcasm. Like that? That was nice, wasn't it? And looky there. Look what just happened. Wow. This is going to be quite the day, ain't it, kiddos? Not quite sure why that happened. <sighs> Okie doke. Well, hmm. What are the options? We got a couple of options. The one option, which I kind of like, but I kind of don't like, is super glue. We can try super glue. It's a fresh break. There's not any chips or anything missing out of it. We'll try that. Um, we'll try that first. And when that doesn't work, <laughs> when that doesn't work, because it's probably not going to work, uh, then I guess we'll be making a new nut for it. So, hmm, fun times ahead. All right, well, while this day of surprises continues, let's, uh, let's move on. Here is, um, this is my D-string. This is about where it ends. I'm gonna go up that far. I've heard some people say, um, put the string where you want it to go and then pull it back one fret worth, which again, works about the same. So that's what we're gonna do. And uh, really, really hoping for no disaster. Although, Disaster has been the norm today. And uh, when you're winding it, remember you want it to go on the inside of the pegs. And you also want it to roll down on the, uh, on the peg as well. I forgot to put my Susie Chapstick there. Unless you're old like me, you have no idea what that reference is. And I'm going to leave it that way and let you figure it out yourself. Not putting a whole Scotia stuff in here, just enough to make sure it slides. Some people use fancy graphite stuff. Some people use homemade nut sauce. Um, I just use chapstick. Uh, no one has been harmed yet by me using chapstick on the nut. No, same thing. See, we got the same problem here, but if we go up to there, or if we pull back one fret, that pulls us at about the same area. So, click, click, and clip. Aren't you glad you're here for this?
let's take a look at this. We'll see if this turns into another goat rope. Love that sound. See how we've got this. Let's do this. Hopefully I'm not gonna screw something up. Alright. Notice how we got the strings coming inside, so it's as straight as long straight a line as we can get coming from the nut coming to here. With that popping off there. Mm, I wonder if that wasn't this. I wonder if that wasn't because there's an angle there. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look at that footage and see if we can figure out what the monkeys was going on there. Because that was just... Just goofy. Alright, after the great uh, phone tuner freaking fiasco, um, we got it going. Um, I don't know what the deal is. Anyways, so here we have This is what I love. One of the things I love about flat wounds. sound like I'm wearing corduroys on my hands. I'd also just like to, to turn on. Yeah, you would. Um, this seems to be holding up for the moment. So what does that mean? That means that in a future episode, you're gonna watch me do, uh, you're gonna watch me make a new nut for this. No kidding, as I'm, as I'm looking at this thing, I'm noticing how deep the notches are in this and how the strings sit way down in this kind of valley and I don't like that. Um, I would rather have them about halfway, um, halfway, if not a little bit more. It should be a groove, it shouldn't be a channel. Uh, and I was looking at that and thinking about rounding it off and filing it down, and I didn't, and well, anyways, there you go. Um, so she's done. Oh, something else that I do, and you might think about doing this too. Um, Whenever I put a new set of strings on, I always write the date on it, and then I put this and I stick it in uh, the case where this sleeps. Uh, so if for some reason um, uh, I have an old man moment and I can't remember when the last time was I put strings on, I can go, oh, September of 2014, and these are the strings that I put on it. I actually cut everything off except this part. So that way I know exactly uh, what I have and I know how long I've had them. So if they still sound good and I've had them on for six months or something. Not that anyone leaves their strings on for that amount of time, right? Then we'll know. So anyways, hopefully that is a little better explanation because uh, on my last one of these I did, I skipped a whole bunch of it, didn't even realize it, and uh, one of my subscribers called me on it, and good on you. Um, you know, because uh, I should have put it all down, and I didn't. So hopefully, and I showed you a couple of boo-boos on this one too, so uh, maybe it's good all around. 
Um, so yeah, there you go. I, I got nothing there. Have a good one.